All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, get started. That way I don't, we can respect your time and get you guys out of here. I'll uh, try to get through everything. Um, we have about 20 slides that I want to go through with you guys. And if we can get through everything today and we don't have to meet on Wednesday, great. At any point, you guys are like, I've had enough today. Can we pick this up Wednesday? Then that's fine, too. However you guys want to do it, just work through or work through it. If you guys want to do about half of them, we'd be half of them. Um, all right, so if you don't have your scope and sequence up, if you guys can try to get that pulled up for me, okay. if you can get your scope and sequence up. If anyone's unaware, Ms. Valero is our department chair for social studies. Yay. And her and I will meet later this week. So if we don't meet on Wednesday, her and I will probably meet on Wednesday for a little bit just to discuss exactly what her role is going to be as far as expectations and for her to kind of pick my brain exactly what it is she wants as far as support for me. Um, support wise, if there's anything you guys need from me at all, let me know. Um, come into the office, send me an email, send me a text message. Um, just keep an open line of communication. I can't read your I can't read your mind. So if you if you're having trouble, I don't know that unless you communicate that with, with me or with your teammates, so we can move on from there. Um, let's see. All right, I want to quickly go over the numbers, um, and we've all seen this, and um, we're gonna get into the heat maps. I sent you guys all the heat maps, um, so I'm gonna have you guys pull that up here in a couple minutes. Also, so just looking at where we were last year. So eighth grade overall. Level two, 93%. So 93% of the kids last year, overall, this is eighth grade, because we don't have sixth and seventh grade numbers. 93% of the kids passed the test, right, 93%. Um, Vanguard, 99% of the Vanguard kids passed, so we're probably looking at like two kids maybe, two or three kids that didn't pass the test. Um, MYP, uh, our grade level kids, only 71% of those kids passed the test, um, which is, is pretty low. Um, if we look at the other grade levels and what they were able to accomplish, it was a little bit low compared to the other grade levels. Um, level three, only 43% of uh, eighth graders reached level three performance last year. 54% of the Vanguard kids and 5% of our MYP kids. So we're looking at very, very low percent of our grade level kids that reached that level, that level three that commended. Um, goals for next year. And I know Mr. Newhouse was kind of asking this question at um, lunch. Not supposed to say a whole lot. Right? No. Remember at lunch you were asking me <laughs> realistically what is what should our goal be? Remember you were asking me realistically? Okay. Um, all right. So I'd like to increase our overall from 93 to 96 as far as going next year, so we can bring that percent up, so we can increase that overall by three percent. Um, we really shouldn't have any Vanguard kids not passing the star test, so uh, from 99 to 100%. Um, and MYP from that 71 to 85, so we we'll really work on trying to bring those low level kids up, trying to close up that gap. Um, overall level percentage, level three, overall, we should be at least 50% overall level three. Um, what was it? We were at 43 last year. So that would be a 7% increase if we go from 43 to 50. So at least half of our kids are hitting that level three. Um, Vanguard should be about 75% of the Vanguard kids should be hitting that level three. Um, so we're gonna have to work, bring that up. And then the MYP kids, if we can bring that up from five to 20, uh, as far as that level three. You know, so you know, if I look at my class of 20 on level kids or 25 on level kids, I'm really looking for you know, those five, six kids in each one of those classes that I can push to that, to that level three. I'm really trying to work with all of them to get them the passing, but where are the four or five, six kids that I really can push and work with a little bit to get them up to that level three instead of that just that that passing percent? Um, any questions if, as far as goals? Did you say said last year seventy percent got level two in YP yeah. on level 70, 70, 70, 71. 71. 71. Okay. 71 percent. Yeah, like that. We had three Vanguard kids that failed. Yeah. And I went and one of them was mine, and I went back and looked at their. I, blew me away that their reading scores were really low too. Right, and if we know that going in, right, but we go and we check that, we check those I kids reading. The reading test was woo. Absolutely, and we know that the social studies test it's is, is a lot of reading. Yeah. But if we go back, we look at, hey, how did our kids do on the reading test? 
you know, their, their scores are higher than the social studies tests. You know, so they're getting those kids using those reading skills uh, that we're good. And so, I mean, it can happen. We can get those kids up. We just have to work on it. What I want to do now is um, about eight years ago, me and, my, me and my team when we were teaching, we really wanted to go from, hey, how do we get from that level two where every kid is passing? Because we, we, you know, we had pretty high numbers. How do we get from level two to level three? Um, and, we, and we sat and we, over the summer, it became kind of important to us and it was our focus. How do we get them beyond level two to level three? So what I want you guys to do is take a few minutes and talk about what are some things that you can do in your classroom to motivate them to not be okay with an 80 or an 85. So when a kid gets his test back or his, his grade back, that it's not, he's not like, oh, I passed. What are some things that you could do in the classroom that motivation to bring them beyond passing and, and pushing them past that level three? So let's just break out for a couple of minutes, discuss amongst, your, amongst the table, and then we'll break out and we'll share some of what your thoughts and opinions are. And I'll share with some of the things that we did too. All right, so take a couple of minutes, talk about it. So doing that, and I also think the test as well. So 
Right. Do you guys, let's, let's break out. Does anyone have any ideas that you guys are able to come up with as far as how that? So they're motivated to get level three as opposed to you constantly trying to motivate them, that that's something that's intrinsic to them, how we kind of build that yeah. self-awareness. Any ideas? Well, I'm share up. <laughs> so you we won't use my idea, but I, the last year I taught in eighth grade mm -hmm. um, at Cullen, uh, we got 100% passing. Awesome. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, I had a lot of kids that got committed the year before. I had, I had uh, 88 kids get committed. Okay. The test got harder the next year, and uh, we got 44 kids. Mm -hmm. But I used money. Okay. And, and it, you know, it, I mean, it is what it is. Those kids were driven by money. All right, so, so think about that. I can I mean, obviously, I don't think we should be giving them cash, cash. But <laughs> could you, you, you have an economic system in your class yeah. where you did, yeah. yeah, where you did linear bucks, mm -hmm. you know, and then that they they could earn that money, that linear bucks, and then use that money store to purchase things within your class, whether it be changing seats or homework pass or you know something like that. So I mean, I think. If you did that as opposed to here's some green cash oh, money. That could get expensive. What other ideas do you guys have? Yeah, we talked about like classroom or like doing it by class, you know, having the pizza party and like that. So when, how do you even see that working? Like how do how would they earn the, the pizza party? Class average. Because so like whenever class has the highest class average? Yes. Yeah, and we were talking or about how about making it just um, for the star, but doing it through the whole year. Because we already have star six weeks. Right. right. So just doing it on every side. We used to do. I did something like that on um, what we call race to the roast is what we did. And so I, we had six classes, and all the classes competed against each other, and they could earn three stars daily. You know, if like everybody was seated and working on their um, do now when the bell rang, they got they earned a stop that day. Right. So there were different ways that they could earn stops each day, and then the first class to 50 stars would win that race to that roast. And I used to keep a bulletin up in my room. Um, and then like on assessments, every kid that got above a 90 on that test, they earned a star for every kid that got above 90. So now it's not every kid that passed, but you have to get commended. You have to be able to show mastery on that task, on that assessment, to earn that star. So, um, you can do things like that and try to build in if you want to, whether it's a pizza party or whatever it is on that level. Yeah. Um, also, the thing I had last year when I did that for my class, you have the on level class and say, oh, we're not going to get it. You have the band, our kids are going to get it. So I was thinking of a way I created in my mind, but I hope that it comes out that I want it to, is houses like in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, but for mine, it would be like the House of Pocahontas, the House of Harry Tubman, and they are divided randomly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's accountability. You have a team that's all mixed in. And right. so, so you're pulling kids from different classes? But then it's like, so we have to keep it really yeah, organized. Yeah, so, that organized. Yeah, so that's, but, that's a way to combat that Vanguard versus M NYP. Right. Um, Maybe start with a certain amount of points, and then every time. I did something called the Burger Bowl last year, the year before. No, I started, never mind. I've been doing it for a while. And it's like a point system, so kind of like the star, the stars yeah. you're talking about, but you didn't just earn stars or points for grades. So obviously, like class averages come back, like the, you know, the, common, the, the class with the highest average in the conference will get points. But um, I noticed that at least that year, my lower classes, like their classroom citizenship was a lot better. The Vanguard kids would get like competitive and like sometimes not a, a, a lot of teamwork. So I would give points for things like everyone pushed their chair in at the end of the period and like lined up quietly or like being a good citizen. Like someone dropped my entire box of pencils and the other kid helps them clean it up. So because that's a little bit more um, subjective, I was able to kind of balance out with the points so that it actually remained competitive and um, that made us, especially the uh, on-level kids really invested because if they saw that they were neck and neck with a Vanguard class, when it came time for a common assessment, like they were in for tutorials and they were studying at home right. and the Vanguard kids kind of just like thought they had it in the pocket. Right, you're trying to find what are some ways that I can try to level this out yeah. so it's not 
Hey, they're at 30 and I'm at six, and we're like, and well, I can't win done, anyway, so why am I even trying? I've also done with Burger Bowl, because I like doing that. There are certain like grading periods where I will have two separate competitions, and there will be one for my on-level classes and one for my Vanguard. And I especially did that going into star season just because it made my life a little bit easier. And giving two prizes, the kids were like, oh, like if I'm in on-level, there's a better chance that my class is going to win because there's less on-level classes. Okay. So. On top of what you're talking about right there, I was thinking about that learner profile, the IB component, that learner profile. You know, and you're arbitrarily kind of giving out points for that bowl base. If you're like, hey, you're hitting this today, yeah. you know, on that learner profile. And then that's kind of just another way to tie that, that learner profile into the class and the system and the, and the culture and stuff. All right. Other ideas, anything you guys talked about? I know that I said in the past it's worked for me, like something that's not incentive driven is responding to what the kids really take interest in and trying to target my lessons towards that interest because sure, they're yeah. going to remember something that they that they care about. I think I've read that if you have an emotion connected to whatever mm -hmm. you're learning, you're more likely to remember it. So if it's a unit about like Andrew Jackson, I'm not just going to talk about he was like the common man's president, I'm going to talk about all the like really screwed up things that he did to like Native American populations and how he was actually pretty racist. like. Um, and for my kids, it helps them with retention, and then it's not something, because even if you're doing like a class competition that's, you know, you're spending money out of pocket, or mm -hmm. you're disrupting like the seating chart you want, right. whatever, that way, um, it was fun for me because the energy that I had to put into planning, like I got back from them because they actually wanted to be learning about it, and then the retention is there. It's not me just buying them off. I think that's a great point, you know, and, and that just goes back to planning. You know, and getting out of your comfort zone, you know, not doing, hey, this is how I did it last year, so this is just how I'm going to do it again this year. But really looking at, you know, what is in the best interest of the kids? How, you know, yeah, we did this last year, but they weren't really that excited about it. Well, if they weren't that excited about it last year, well, guess what? They're probably not going to be very motivated about it just this year. You know, so you may, you know, trying to find another way, a different modality of learning to try to hit those kids would be great. Maybe um, staying a level three is not about a test, though. You know, not really having to tune in that the level three is about the star test, that a level three or a level, yeah, a level three is what your, you know, your critical thinking skills that you're making, what you're making on your sure, so you class talk, work yeah. instead of like focusing so much on, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, instead, I agree. Instead of totally, function. like, it makes me sick. To heat to walk near someone's room. I'm going to space and somebody will just going to deal with it. <laughs> and here, the test talked about so much. I really don't mention the test ever until about March. And I'm like, sure, okay, yeah, we got that, by the way. You know, they know that. Yeah, I don't think you need to. to but is there a way to make level, the test, 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 level test, test, three test. without saying test? You know, I think is there a way to do it from, you know, without being so blatant? They understand like that they, they, yeah, they're trying to when they get out of school go to college or start a career, exactly. you know. So it's all about being college ready, career ready. Maybe you know? So how do we get you to that college career ready, which is beyond? Maybe, you know, we're trying to get that's that. the proper term. To use. Sure, I mean career it, ready, right? That, and, and if that's kind of the direction that you guys that you want to move it in, in your class, I don't I don't see any issue, any problem with that. It's just how do we get them beyond passing? Yeah, pass this to hey, I really want to excel at this. I want to come in for tutorials. I want to get I want to get a 90 or higher um, beyond just passing. Yeah. I know that like one issue that I had my first year teaching history was my kids, again, I had, I mean, there was the racial component, like why am I learning about dead white guys? But even when that wasn't an issue, they're like, I want to be an engineer when I grow up. I don't need to know who the third president was. Yeah. But if we present it, and this goes back to, again, like the IV stuff, why it's important, like a lot of the time, if, if there is stuff in the U.S. history curriculum that is not relevant to their life, but if you're like, you are practicing this skill, and this is something, as an, like, as an engineer, you're gonna need to be an organized person, you're gonna need to have a logical thought pattern, and that's what we're working through. Problem solving, like, critical thinking, summarizing, yeah. sequencing, like all of that the stuff. The process standards. Those are all skills that you're gonna need for whatever career that you go into, right? The, the content is just the tool we're using to teach you those skills. But I also will say, like, I mean, I'm a big history nerd, and I'll be like, history is every subject. I'm like, I don't care if you if your favorite subject is math. Like, the technological innovations that we're learning about in this class, like, those are scientific innovations, and 
Like, if you're really interested in how the science works, cool. Like, I'm going to give you extra credit to do an outside project and explain that to the class for a short presentation. But, like, you need to understand the impact on society and, like, how we were able to get from there to, like, what we have today. Like, really fast trains and cars and the internet. And mm -hmm. uh, just a couple more ideas, some things that I've, I've done. And I'm saying because I did these, these are things that you guys can do. But just to start thinking about, we did um, what we call a century club. Right, which you could only get into the Century Club if you got a perfect 100 on a test. Right? And that's not with extra points, like the four bonus points, I got to 103, but you had to get a 100 on the test and then you got into the Century Club. And we had it for the whole seventh grade in the whole department. Um, and then when they got into the Century Club, they got a cool t-shirt right, for being in the Century Club, right? like a club t-shirt that they got that they could wear on Fridays or not, um, that we designed and got the PTO to pay for for us. And then, you know, we would take their picture and put it on our wall and you'd have like Century Club students and have pictures of them. And then I would keep them up there for like the next year the kids would come in and they'd be like, oh, that's my brother. He was in the Century Club? No way, he's stupid. <laughs> Century Club, you know, and um, so that's one thing we did. Um, and then I, I, had, I got this mm, stamp that, that said commended on it because I was really trying to drive towards mastery and outside of um, just passing. And so anytime we give any type of assessments, quizzes, or tests, if they get a 90 or higher, we would stamp it with commended. It's like this big green stamp and it'd say commended on it. And when you pass back the quizzes or the tests, these kids would look at it and they'd be like, oh, I got an 88. I was only two points away from being a commended. Or they got a 100 or 99 and kids would just beg, please give me that one point. Please give me that one point. Please give me that one point. You know, so I started seeing when I was passing back the test, kids weren't like, Yes, I passed. It was, damn, I didn't get commended this time. You know, or damn, I just missed the century club. You know, so it just kind of did that changing the mindset from passing to mastery. How, how do I show mastery of the concepts? Because we all know 73 is not, I mean, that's, yeah, you pass, but that's not really mastery of the objectives. All right. Um, if you have any other ideas you want to share once you see each other or you want to email me, feel free to. Um, a lot of good ideas that you guys talked about. I can tell you you're really passionate about the grade level kids and working and work with those kids, so I think that's awesome. So, um, the heat map. Do you guys have the heat maps that you know, dude? I got it. I tried pulling it up here and I'm not, it won't show up. So if you guys could just take a look at the heat maps. So look, I don't want this to be like a slam session or we're not doing good enough because I mean, we're at, what was it, 93% as far as passing? But take a look at it, and look at all the red, and look at the numbers. There is, I don't think, any objective that the kid, that 70% or 75% of the kids master. Not a single objective as you go through that. Which tells us, you know, we all know that the passing standard on that test is like a 54. You know, like if you get like if you fail the test, you pass like a, like a, 50, a 54 test. You know, so looking at that, and, and this is what I was talking about. You know, where I was the other day, where I was talking about look, there's room for growth for us. I mean, we're not perfect. We're not as good as we can get. There's, look at all that red. You get, there's plenty of room for us to be able to grow. Um, and and we'll use these heat maps as we go through the year. But a lot of this. We, a lot of these, um, if you kind of click where they have like the process standards. I know, I know, that's like 68 is phenomenal. I mean, it's like, whoo, we got that, that, that one's 68. Maybe we don't need to work on that one so much this year. Um, but if you even look at the process standards, and they don't have them colored in. But those are a lot of things that align through the different contents. Yeah, you know, those are the, you know, that um, analyzing and inferring and sequencing and cause and effect. And, um, yeah. Yeah, NT would be not tested. So, so as you go back, yeah, like as I go back and I look at that, if I see NT for two years in a row, that's not something I'm spending a lot of time on in my classroom, right? You know, I, I, you know, I might, I'm going to talk and I teach it, but I'm not going to be spending, you know, if something's not being but tested. But the readiness standard, do you think that it's that they just might not have gotten to it yet? So, you know, so, the, so yeah, some of them might rotate every three years yeah. or every four years, and then some of them are. You'll notice every year that that, st that standard is being tested, and, and, and I'm saying, no, I'm not saying skip it. You know, don't teach it. I'm saying, I'm not. Yeah. Life, like, be able to support a point of view on a social 
studies are meant. Like that's important for life is that you should be able to have a point of view. But absolutely, to test it, standardized. Well, and that's also, can, it's also a, a huge thing in IB right. is different perspectives. Right. Right. We have yeah. to teach that to be in IB school. Right. So so not yeah. teach those. Yeah, that's like what I'm saying. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think all of those process standards are super important as yeah. far as, because that's the stuff that we talk about. That's what I'm going to need as an engineer. That's what I'm going to need as a mathematician or a teacher, or, you know, those processing skills. So I definitely don't want to avoid teaching or working on any of the process skills. Um, but I, I don't want to kill us on that data all day. I just wanted us to be able to look at it and reflect and be like, oh, okay, we, there, is, there is some room for us to be able to do better. You know, on, on a lot of these things, right? Yeah. And I know, as a, if you're a sixth grade or a seventh grade teacher, you're probably looking at that, going, "This really doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form." But if we're working on trying to, I know that eighth grade teachers would love for us to be doing as much as we can to ramp up to, to in that vertical line. And really, in the rigor. And am I wrong now? No, I'm agreeing with you. Right, right. Hot. Let's keep going. All right, so we it's did. kind of like a rule. I mean, the test is it's like playing roulette because you're not sure what you're going to test that year. Yeah. Yeah. You know certain it's things. Exactly. Right. It's like so three years. Test. Test. And all these chunks of these really old it's documents. It's like they're here. It's not tested that year. Yeah. Man, they tested it 2012, 2015, but for some reason. They didn't. Right. right. What kind of that thinking? Thinking? I think you should know their thinking. Sure. Yeah. If we can get them uh, in here and talk to them, we can ask them. All right. So let's talk about quickly, um, again, like I said, I don't want to, if you guys want to keep talking about the data, just let me know and we can keep talking about the data. You guys want to keep moving or do you guys get the gist of what's going on with the data? Um, we'll talk about it here. So well, one last thing with the data is start looking at, hey, what can, what does align vertically that we can do consistently so they hear the same language in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? So when you're talking about analyzing, you guys are teaching analyzing the same way in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. You know, we're teaching cause and effect the same in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So they have that common language, that common ver verbiage to really, so they, they're they practicing. So when they get to 8th grade, they're not like, we've never used that before. I have no idea what that is. And you're like, oh, okay, sure. Right? Yeah. So last year, uh, I guess you and Stump were working on that? Or who was it that was working on it? It was just yours? Uh, he was sending out these like uh, warm up stems that we could that we could all use at every grade level questions in our warm ups that were like stems that would be used in star tests. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. what were some of the first examples? Kind of yeah, what are the similarities between what are the similarities the differences? To find your you know, what are some of the causes? Oh, right. They're just the stems. So, so the kids got to finish. Instead of instead mm -hmm. of just making a random warm up. We could, we could do whatever warm topic we want, but we would focus on those stems so the students could get used to that line of questioning. That yeah, I, I think if you really so, could take that those warm-ups and those exit tickets and frame them, frame them so they in star-related so question, like star star. questioning, um, you know, so they're used to reading at that level yeah. with that vocabulary, um, and they're used to that multiple choice, you know, yeah. or that, you know, because that, that's what I try to do. One of the star questions, one of the star questions the way they ask it is like, you know, what is the most accurate or something like that? Yeah. And my students would just select the best one. And so I spent, you know, probably a few warm-ups that I said most right. and then went through and showed them, yeah, all of these are right, guys. This one's the most. This one's the most right. So, sure. Yeah. Um, it's like it's the worst significant. It's like testing yeah. Right. Yeah. Just using the test. If some of them don't understand You guys have access to, uh, like, yeah. old star released history yeah. tests, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so in math, what we did last year is we would go take that test and we would cut them all, all, all the questions and write the teaks next to the question. Yeah. And then, when, so if I was in unit this unit on this teak, I would go through the star questions and what are, what are the star questions that match the teak that I'm currently working on? And those were our warm ups and those were our exit tickets. You know, so that you're practicing. That seeing it, they're right. seeing it, they're practicing it. You're talking about it, you're discussing it. I mean, Carrie's got them up in her room now. I have them up, you have them in one place, the I have them all over with around the room. So, you know, the stems, is every time the, the question okay. stems so the oh. students can just use them. I don't use them every day, I do use them every day. Besides, so they put them in their Corel notes, and, you know, yeah. Like, you know, sometimes I start with the beginning of class. They're great for summarizing, too. You like, know, I don't want to summarize it's good for them. What's, yeah, yeah, like, what's like, what are they use? What are the characteristics of? Right. One of the yeah. characteristics. So start your class off in the beginning of the year just having them do those five questions on anything they want in the world. Right. 
characters of your brother. Well, you yeah. know, all um, the characters of school. Yeah. school. Yeah. Do you hear contrast both Miley Cyrus and you? Yeah. <laughs> they will do it. And then they'll talk. And then they, they'll yes. know what that question means. Right. There's not a whole lot of that. Right, sorry, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they hear. I like that. <laughs> 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 that is their similarity. Because I know that like, you sent it up. I've added a bunch more, but yeah, let me see. Okay. Let me see. Okay. 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 Um, 